Just recently, I posted a video talking about how I had dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, related to eosinophilic esophagitis, also known as EOE. Now, if you don't know what EOE is, I will tell you in just a moment, but I wanted to make a follow-up video to that because I was not in the completely right mindset. I was feeling very down, and I just wanted to give you guys an update now that I have seen the allergy doctor, and I went and had my second EGD, and scope where they go down my throat with a camera and I want to let you guys know how that went. Now originally the doctor was telling me that I had eosinophilic esophagitis. Now they were going based off the symptoms and what I was experiencing but the real way to diagnose EOE is through a biopsy. Ouch. Now my first EGD they went through because they were hoping to expand my esophagus because it was constricted. There was a stricture in it and they were unable to do so because it was so tense, it was so thick, it was not able to be stretched, it was too narrow. So after that they put me on several medications including a steroid inhalant and for a few weeks I tried that and my swallow did get slightly better but the end goal was to go and get a second EGD where they would be able to dilate my esophagus. Well a week before I went for my next EGD I went and saw an allergy doctor and he prescribed me on a different steroid, a type called Bunisinac where I would mix it with something thick and sticky such as honey and I would swallow it two times a day to really soften this esophagus that way the next time that they did this procedure that it would be successful. He went over my biopsy results though from the first visit that I had with my EGD and it didn't show any eosinophils in it. That is what really makes eosinophilic esophagitis what it is. These eosinophils gather because you're sensitive to something or they're reacting to something that you're doing. They gather in the esophagus and make it narrow. Now, like I said, my first biopsy did not show any eosinophils, but they weren't really testing for that. They were testing for other things. Well, he, in this next one that I was going to get done, he wanted six biopsies taken to see the eosinophil count because this would really determine if I was having an allergy or a sensitivity or if my body was reacting and causing these eosinophils to gather in my esophagus, making it more narrow. Now I know I'm talking really fast and if you guys have not seen the first video, I'll go ahead and link it down below because I did go into more detail about all of this a little bit slower, but I want to get you guys back up to speed. So I went and got my second EGD done and luckily I was able to get my esophagus dilated. This is what I needed the whole time. They were able to go down with the scope, go in here and kind of balloon it in a way where it would make it more open and they ended up telling me that I had a stricture. They were able to take six biopsies and they did test it for EOE and it came back negative, meaning that I did not have EOE. In the end, what they ended up saying that I had was a stricture related to acid reflux, which makes sense. My acid reflux started when I was in nursing school. I never had acid reflux until then, but I think just because the way I was eating and the much how much stress I was under, this is where my acid reflux really started and it just has been there for the past seven or eight years. There have been times in the middle of the night where I wake up and I feel like my stomach acid is just up here in my throat. Now since I've been all these on all these new medications that has not been the issue but all that damage for so long has has been what has caused it to create this stricture, meaning this narrowing in my esophagus, and actually it is somewhat common. I did not know about this or anything about this when I first was experiencing it, and not until I started putting it out there and started talking to more people that it is fairly common. Several of my friends, so my friends' family members have gone through this, so I am not alone and this is not something new or uncommon, unfortunately, but it kind of made me feel better, like I wasn't going crazy, losing my mind. And in the middle of all this difficulty swallowing and food building up here in my esophagus, I felt as though 
I was getting super anxious. You know, there were several times where, where we had to call 911 because the food got stuck and I started to panic. I was getting so anxious, but now that the issue has been resolved or it's getting better at least, I feel like my anxiety has literally pretty much gone away. <sighs> now anxiety is crazy. You know, I see patients in the hospital all the time who are having these anxiety attacks and I never fully understood it until I finally went through it myself. And I feel like being the patient sometimes has helped me understand more of what the patients that I'm helping are going through and helped me be more patient in general in providing my care. Where I'm at now is that I'm on a proton pump inhibitor which will decrease the acid. I'm still on the steroids twice a day, so I'm looking to get off those soon with my next follow-up appointment. I'm on an antihistamine just because they were wondering if I had any allergic reactions that were causing this to constrict, which I don't, so hopefully I'll be getting off of that soon. And I just finished 30 days of an anti-inflammatory, which was also to help decrease the inflammation in my esophagus. So now instead of EOE, they're calling it esophagitis, just inflammation, also a stricture related to acid reflux. I am starting to put on more weight, thankfully. When I was going through all this, I probably lost anywhere from 20 to 30, 25 to 30 pounds. And uh, I was just feeling really self-conscious. I, of course, who doesn't want to lose a few pounds? But 25 to 30 pounds, I felt like I was looking unhealthy. I was looking too skinny. And at this point, I was feeling really depressed, but it did get better. And hopefully it will continue to do better. Now, I, in the future, I might need another EGD, another scope to go in and help dilate it, just because this issue has progressed over years and it might not be completely fixed with just one stretching of it. But staying on the antacids, the proton pump inhibitor, will help decrease the acid so it doesn't come back. As for my eating right now, I will say that it is much better probably at 90% not a hundred percent yet I do eat really slow still and I do prefer moist foods that are chopped and I do take my time eating but I will not say that it's a hundred percent yet but we'll see what the doctors say and I do feel like it is getting better that is just what I've been going through in the past couple months and just really not feeling like myself but I am starting to feel like myself again as I get back in the routine of things and start eating more regularly thank you for all those who checked in on me there was a lot of you who reached out to me independently or who commented on my last video if you guys have any questions or you're going through something like this go ahead and share it in the comments down below because the more we talk about it, the more we make people aware about it the more likely likely they are to go and check to see a doctor being a nurse I'm not always the first person to reach out to help for my doctors but with some encouragement from some friends and family I did seek medical attention and it was very much needed I'll talk to you guys later thanks bye